You think you got it all figured out because you're getting ready to take their queen and they're sacrificing the queen to put you in checkmate. They're running a scheme, a scam. So me and my wife, as we do often, go to the movies, checking out some things, and we might see something that's not so popular. But there's a movie out right now, and it's a kid's movie. Maleficent. It's the one with the, uh, if anybody heard of it, it's like number two. Maleficent, it's got Angelina Jolie in it, or whatever. So, you know, typical movie, they got the dark side against the, you know, and you know, some more in there, and they got some mythical creatures and all these things. But as I'm watching the movie, I'm listening to the language. There's a little white girl, little European girl, look like she's about 14 years old, She's, her title is, she's the queen of the Moors. The queen of the Moors. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, they're going to throw that in there, but I'm expecting that I'm getting ready to see some, you know, she maybe there is telling you where the setting is and it's somewhere in, uh, you know, Arabia, somewhere, you know. So I'm like, well, where are the Moors at? Because I don't see too many people. Well, she's a human being. Her Godmother or the mother that raised her is Maleficent. She's not a human being. She's, you know, she's like a it appears to be a dark angel. You know, she's got black wings, everything is black, she got all these spells. And they're on the land of the Moors. She falls in love with this boy who's, you know, their king and they got the castle and everything. So they get to talking about the Moors. Everybody, the Moors, Moors, Moors. Moors, I keep hearing it. I'm thinking that maybe I'm, you know, hearing something wrong. The Moors are not humans. And that's how they're describing them. They're not humans. How dare we with the humans? You let the non-humans come on this? The non-humans. The non-humans. So then we go to the castle. And in the castle, they already threw out the word Moors, so now I'm looking for it now. In the castle, of course, Europeans, everybody's got European accents, they have as the servants, blacks, and the women are brown and black, and they got hijabs on. Mm. And these are the servants. They don't call them Moors, but they're the slaves or the servants. So they keep on talking Moors, 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 Moors. Then there's some other stuff in the movie, you know. Uh, Angelina Jolie, she's like the, you know, she, she, she's white too, but, you know, she's got the black everything on, and then she goes and, you know, they add this stuff in here with these, with these white women, and she goes and she has to find herself, and, you know, she links up with a black guy, and, you know, it's his duty, just like in a, what's the one with the superhero, with the girl, the lady, uh, not Wonder Woman, but the new one, what is it, Captain Marvel, you know, that whole thing was about, making the white woman find who she is so she can be great. They got that whole thing in this movie again too. It's the black man's job. And he has to sacrifice himself. He dies so that she can become this great. So her daughter's the leader of the Moors. She's a Moor, you know, half animal, half human. And you know, she ends up being the one to save the day, right? But then I was thinking about it. So take some people who don't know anything about the Moors. Don't know anything. Don't know anything about Muslims. Or the only thing they know about Muslims is what they see on TV, that Muslims are terrorists. Now their second introduction to Muslims is that they're servants. Their first introduction to the Moors is that they're not humans. And that they're slaves. Contrary to if they pick up a book and it just so happens it's somewhere there that the Moors were contributors to the world development, the sciences and mathematics that they helped Europe develop and they conquered Spain and all these other kind of things. A child in its innocence is going to look at this movie and be laughing because, oh, Maleficent is such a great thing. And we send our kids to these movies. This is already number two. And there's many, many, many other different movies that are out there. 
but our children, the next generation, they're watching these movies. I'm an adult, I can see this movie, and I can pinpoint and pick out all of the subliminal images and messages that are in that movie, but the next generation is seeing this movie, and they have just been given a lesson on, Mus on Islam in this movie. They've just been given a, a, a lesson on one of the great uh, 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 advancements in civilization in the world. They've just been given a lesson that the Moors are nothing. They're animals. So then our children grow up and they open up a business or they go get a job or they go to school and they're confused at why in the society that they live in, they're looked down upon. They're confused at why when they tell them that their name is Muhammad or Abdul, that people frown upon them. They don't understand that the whole society is victim to the schemes of the shaitan. He wants to cause separation. Now, this is why I was saying that this community in particular is under attack. Why is that? Because who is charged with being the best example for Islam for the world? Because right when you have that movie, Maleficent, then you flip to another channel and you see the prince <coughs> or the king or whoever of Saudi Arabia or Dubai and he's got all his theatrical robes and clothing but if you don't you dare go on the internet and google what goes on in Dubai or one of those other so-called Muslim countries that are rich in oil and rich in all these natural resources but their neighboring country has a 90% poverty rate where people starving and suffering from disease and all these other things then they got people enslaved over them places. They got casinos and gambling and prostitution and cigarettes is the number one uh, uh, narcotic sold and all these other things. So how far off is Maleficent and so who is charged with being the prime example for Islam in the world? Who is charged with that? So we have to look at ourselves we can't be looking at somewhere else saying, oh, that's what a Muslim looks like. Because the television is promoting that a Muslim looks like something totally different. So when we walk in with a, with a, with a business suit on, and our name is Muhammad or Abdul, and we speak in English, but our skin is darker, then people look down upon us. But they're forced to listen to us because we bring something to the table, whatever that is that we have whether it's our human capital or we have a great business idea or whatever the case is, our education, we lay that on, people listen to us. Then they say, wait, you're different. Oh, wait, wait, why is it? Well, you know, I'm Muslim. We've just wiped away all of the falsehood and all of the propaganda that they've been hearing over the years, all the movies that they've watched. Well, yeah, come on down to Juma. You know how many Muslims Muslims, they've been Muslim, grew up in Muslim countries. Yeah, man, I, I like coming down to you guys, Juma, because I haven't been able to take my wife to Juma because everywhere else we go. Yeah, when I go there, man, I don't feel like I'm. I love it down there, man, because you guys are just, I can understand the cookbook. So who is charged with being the example? So we can't be ashamed. We have to be unapologetic about our connection to this community. The community under the leadership of Imam Warth and Dean Muhammad, we can't be ashamed to throw his name out. We have to understand who he was, what his purpose was, what Allah blessed him with. Who has a better interpretation of the life of our prophet for us to understand? Who has been blessed with the ability to give us a clear understanding of the life of our prophet. Who? We got YouTube, we hear the, the other sheikhs and the imams, then we love them, and they have a lot to offer. But who is giving us what Allah says to use, which is the two lights, the Quran and the life of our prophet? Who's giving it to us in a way that we can digest it? 
and then regurgitate it and feed it back to the people in a way that is practical. When studying the life of the prophet, it was all about being practical. And what are we up against? Aladdin, flying on the carpet, Maleficent, the shakes and the people that come over from other places, or the shakes from right here, who've been influenced by the other shakes in the and I say shake because you know people use that like that's you're shake you like you you know you're the leader of, 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 of some great and then they come and they preaching al Islam in a way that is 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 you know it's like giving somebody Kool Aid if it tastes like juice but it's nothing but sugar water it gets you all happy for a little while but it has no nutrients no vitamins Iman War of Dean Muhammad. Amen. War of Dean Muhammad. What we have in our community. We are the ones that are charged. It is our obligation to be the best example. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. To be the best example of what a Muslim is. People would ask the gentleman questions. You know, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know Muslims could ride motorcycles. Well, what do you think? But they, all they know is the Muslims, they, you got to put on a fold. You gotta put on a fold and you gotta you gotta you gotta bust down and make a lot when the Islam is called. That's all they know about a Muslim. And we and you guys are terrorists, you know, but they don't wanna say that because they don't wanna offend nobody. You guys do regular things. The Muslim in the Muslim community, they are all you guys are listening to music. They've been wanting to listen to music all their life. They've been told they can't listen. You guys are listening, to, you're dancing? But if it wasn't for Imam Wolf D. Muhammad pointing out, pulling out the, the things that were minimized, like not letting go of your culture, pointing out the life of the prophet that talks about where he respected other people's cultures. If it wasn't for Imam Wolf D. Muhammad, most Muslims, including myself, would think that everybody in the world needs to be Muslim. Now, that's the only that's the fix for the, the society is that everybody needs to convert to Al Islam. That wasn't the life of the prophet. That wasn't his plight. Although all those shakes and emails won't say those exact words, but then they condemn everybody who's not Muslim. So what are you saying? The only way that you'll get accepted is if you... Then what difference are you than the extremist Christian or the extremist Jew who's been influenced by the shaitan where if you're not Christian or if you're not Jew or you're not chosen, you're not going to heaven? What difference are you as a Muslim when in the Quran it doesn't say that? That wasn't the life of our prophet. We respected all religions that came from Allah. We respected all cultures that didn't uh, jeopardize your morale and contradict the religion of Al-Islam. This is the importance of us in this room, the community of Iman Dur War of D. Muhammad. Understanding that Allah has blessed him to restore the best version of this religion and the best version of our prophet so that we can be the best example of Muslims for our society. We say Alhamdulillah. Rajim. We seek refuge with Allah from a rejected Satan. Please join me in the door as we close. <clears throat> oh Allah bless Muhammad and the followers of Muhammad as thou did bless Ibrahim and the followers of Ibrahim. And oh Allah make Muhammad successful and the followers of Muhammad successful and thou did make Ibrahim and the followers of Ibrahim successful for surely. Thou art praised and magnified and our midst forever to come into suffering.